What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same. And right now, I'm feeling like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here, founder of InspiredInsider.com, where I talk with inspirational entrepreneurs like the founders of RX Bar, Einstein Bagels, Atari, and many more, and how they overcome big challenges in life and business. Uh, Our sponsor today is Rise25.com, which I co-founded with my business partner, John Corcoran. Rise25 hosts in-person VIP events and masterminds for top entrepreneurs all over the country, including many events in the e-commerce industry. Uh, Last year, we hosted uh, events in Austin, Chicago, Santa Barbara, San Diego, New York, Sonoma, and Las Vegas, and maybe coming to a city near you. So if you see the value of immersing yourself with other top entrepreneurs to connect and collaborate to get your business to the next level, go to rise25.com and contact us to find out when and where our next event will be. Uh, I am very excited to introduce today's guest. We have Michael Eldridge, who's founder of Safety Glasses USA.com. His experience as a U.S. Marine veteran, thank you for your service, Michael. Auto mechanic and assembly line technician amplified the importance of vision safety. And in 2000, he turned his knowledge into one of the web's most popular companies for protective eyewear. They've grown to 20 plus employees and have supplied protective eyewear and safety equipment to hundreds of thousands of satisfied customers around the world. Michael, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So on the mentor topic, sure, Mike, I'm sure a big influence was the Marines. Mm-hmm. Um, what were some big lessons you took from, from the Marines? And if you have any crazy stories that you're allowed to share? Yeah. Um, I think probably the biggest lesson was is don't quit. Hmm. Um, you know, as much as we talk about the success of running an e-commerce business for 17 years, that doesn't mean we didn't have hurdles or downtime mm-hmm. or moments when we thought, okay, maybe this isn't the right thing to do. Um, I definitely received my fair share of criticism, uh, like whether what? Be from family members or friends saying this is never going to work. Who's going to buy safety glasses online? That's stupid. You know that type of thing that right. you get when you try to do something of this of this nature. And so I think the biggest thing I take from the Marine Corps is uh, you don't quit, don't give up, just keep moving forward. What, what, how does that, what did that look like in the Marine Corps for you? Was like a specific like uh, routine of a run or a workout? What, what do you remember that? It, it's, that? Just that it's just that, that mentality that's at the time, you know, I went into, into boot camp in 1991, was just after um, the first Iraq war. And it was just drilled into you that you never give up, no matter how bad you're hurting or what the situation is, you just don't mm-hmm. quit. You just keep mm-hmm. moving forward until either you succeed or you die, I mean, point blank. Right. And it just kind of carried over to me. I, I, I guess I just had that mentality that I don't care how bad the circumstances are, I'm going to keep trying. And ultimately, it, it paid off. What made you decide to join the Marines? Uh, well, um, both of my grandfather, father served in World War II in the Army. Um, I had a few cousins and nephew or nieces that served in the Navy. My dad was, uh, uh, spent a career in the Air Force, uh, so I've been surrounded by military members all my life. Um, I decided to join the Marine Corps because there's, when I was in high school, I was approached by a Marine Corps recruiter, and there's just something about that branch that just really struck a chord with me. Um, I liked how they, you know, the, the, the honor that they held and, and the traditions and so forth, and so that really appealed to me, and uh, that's one of the reasons that I joined. Yeah, it looked like you were sort of like an engineer. You were putting together different parts. What did you do? I actually was a mechanic. A mechanic, uh, okay. So I was a diesel mechanic. I went to diesel uh, school. I was a 3522 was my MOS. Um, so day-to-day activities were uh, repairing Humvees, five-ton trucks. Um, I spent a year in Japan in a um, 
Iwakuni, Japan, which was a Marine Corps air station. Um, when I showed up, well, my first day there, <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. I, my first day there, they have these 5,000-gallon refueling tankers for the aircraft. And they had 15 of them, and two of them worked. And Wow. They're like, good luck. <laughs> yeah. And basically what happened is the guy who was responsible for working on those tankers had uh, was arrested because he was illegally selling motos- motorcycle parts. Mm. Um, he so had his own he, e-commerce business. Yeah. He was in the brig. And so they're like... Um, and the reason they selected me is because when I was in high school, I took two years of vocational automotive. And the engines, that we, the small engines that we worked on were built by Oshkosh. And lo and behold, those 5,000-gallon 5, tankers use Oshkosh engines for the pump motors. Mm. So, like, here you go, have fun. And so over the course of six months, I, I was able to get all 15 of those tankers wow. running. That's amazing. It was a lot of work and a lot of overtime, so to speak, but it, it was very gratifying. It was something I really enjoyed. I, I love being a mechanic and uh, the the conditions and the way that unit was run was was uh, fantastic. The really cool thing is is the people who worked on the flight line, the Marines were so happy that they actually had working tankers and, and they were in good repair that they would often invite me out to the flight line and allow me to help refuel different types of aircraft. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was able to experience refueling F-18s, uh, different types of helicopters, and I just had a blast. It was very cool. Your beloved. Uh, uh, what was, would you say, a most memorable uh, story or moment in when you are in the Marines? Um. Well, there's a couple. Uh, again, this is when I'm stationed at Iwakuni. Um, I uh, I suffered an injury while working on a reta- uh, refueling tanker. Uh, we had to replace a, a hose reel. Every tanker has two retractable hoses, and they're different diameters. And the, the spring for this re- retractor was broken, so we had to replace it. Hmm. So if you can imagine under the belly of a tanker, it looks like a semi-truck, like a big milk truck tanker, there is a big metal cage, and inside those metal cages are where the hose reels reside. Um, and then it has a spring-loaded metal door that you lift up to access uh, everything. I'm already there. getting scared. I'm under yeah. a huge truck, and there's yeah. something that's so spring-loaded. Okay. It takes two guys to get this hose reel out of here because it's so heavy. Wow. And so, you know, you're breaking these bolts loose, and then you're you're rocking it back and forth to kind of unseat it so you can lift up and out of there. Well, we weren't paying very good attention, and we didn't realize that this spring-loaded door, three of the four springs were broken. So it only had one spring Jeez. keeping it up. And this door weighs probably, I'm estimating 180 pounds probably. It's like a... A metal mesh door yeah. made out of pretty heavy-duty metal. Right. Well, anyway, as we're rocking this hose reel back and forth, the door falls, and the edge of it hits me right on the top oh, of the gosh. head and splits my head open. Oh, <laughs> horrible. Yeah, and so uh, I end up getting rushed to uh, to medical, and a long story short, uh, my nickname for the, my rest of my tour there was Zipperhead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we could laugh about it in your life yeah. to talk about it. Um, that is crazy. I want you to talk uh, a minute about EDC Planet. Sure. What is it's EDC Planet? And, EDC. Yeah, mm-hmm. For people that don't EDC. know. Yeah, EDC Planet is a hobby, um, and it stands for everyday carry, which means the things that you carry on you at, uh, every day. Uh, the, the items you feel are essential that you must have with you at all times, and it differs from person to person. And so it's it's a it's a forum where you can go and share imagery or discuss those things that you carry with you on a daily basis. So is this like uh, weapons or what? Like what oh, it could be. You know, some people feel like I got to have a certain type of pen. I've got to have hmm. you know a field note notebook to write down my ideas or my lists 
It could be a pocket knife. Hmm. Uh, what made you start that? Just an interest in that. Um, it actually, there was a, uh, back when uh, Tumblr was super popular, um, I was active on Tumblr, and there was a, a, a college student who uh, would share different types of imagery from people who would, we call them pocket dumps, where you take everything out of your pockets and you put it on the table and arrange it and then take a picture of it and share it, and this is what everything is and where you can find it. And he did a very good job with that, and I'm like, you know what, it'd be kind of fun to have a forum like that. And so mm-hmm. as a hobby, I built EDC Planet as a forum, kind of a almost like a self-indulgence, so to speak. Mm. When I first read that, I thought it was more for, like, prote- I picture people kind of protecting themselves, whether there's like a knife or gun, but it's not that at all. It could just be anything. It could be anything. Now, yeah. there are sections for people who um, carry weapons, um, but it's it's that's not the sole purpose of it, no. Mm. So, my first of all, I want to be the first one to thank you. This has been awesome. I, I love hearing the, the journey story, and uh, really, it's cool to hear the, sort of the evolution of the e-commerce journey from, from 2000. Um, I wanted to ask two final questions, sure. uh, since it's Inspired Insider. Um, and one is the low, lowest moment, something that you had to really push. You talk about, you know, never quit moment mm-hmm. what was a low moment and then the flip side what's been a proud moment uh that you've had with the business i think the low moment was after the housing crash because there was a time there when we weren't quite sure if we were going to make it um we had that we were forced to lay off a few employees um we really had to tighten our belt so to speak um really get a handle on expenses and uh so that was probably a low moment just because there was so much worry and anxiety going on. Um, it's amazing how after eight years that can happen so quickly. Yeah. It is, and it was in a blink of an eye, and it was, uh, you know, you're calling people that you trust in the industry, and they're having the same problem, and you're calling on customers who have been great customers for a long time, and they're like, you're getting a busy signal because they've closed their doors. And it was just, just a very sinking feeling of not knowing what's next. Um, we were able to, to get through that. I think probably for a high moment, uh, knowing that I became fully self-employed, I think that was a, a high moment knowing that, uh, I was no longer working for the man, so to speak. <laughs> Yeah. Um, any other proud moments that you've had? Oh, plenty along the way. You know, we've had milestones here and there. Uh, we have a GSA schedule, you know, being able to get through all the red tape and have a GSA schedule so that we can sell uh, specific products to the government was mm. a, a big milestone. Uh, a couple of brands, um, you know, uh, getting authorized to sell Oakley and Oakley SI products was a big milestone. Is that hard? Us. Is that a lot of uh, people can fighting? It be very difficult, yeah, because yeah. they, they don't just accept anybody. Um, so, yeah, I think another thing that we're very proud about is the number of uh, positive reviews we have from customers. Um, that, to me, that speaks volumes. And I still, to this day, get a summary of all the reviews that happen in the day, and I go through every single one of them. Yeah. It seemed like even early on for you, Mike, that you stress customer service. Probably, um, you know, not everyone who started the Yahoo store, was, they were just trying to figure out the Yahoo store. They weren't probably bothering with the live chat function. That seemed that it was kind of part of your value. Now, how do you train the customer service staff to, you know, like you said, the, the people coming back and the customer service is huge? Well, the one thing that we, we pre- the mantra that we pretty much live by is, you know, we got to take care of the customer or somebody else will. Um, in this day and age, it's awfully easy for somebody to go just somewhere else because really another vendor is only a mouse click away. Um, so we really work hard at training our CSRs in product knowledge. We have training every Thursday for an hour on new products, and we also – do reminder training on existing products um, and technology. 
And then we have really ironed out specific procedures now so that the customer service experience is consistent. You know, it's like, hey, if I call uh, customer service uh, rep number one, I'm going to get the same message if I call CSR number three. So right. consistency is important to us. And, you know, push come to shove, uh, we'll eat an order if we have to. You know, if we feel like, hey, yeah. you know, this customer didn't do anything wrong, we'll, we'll take care of them in any way that we can. Yeah. Mike, um, I think everyone, thank you again. I think everyone should check out safetyglassesusa.com. Where else should we point people towards, or is that the best place? That's probably the best place if you're interested in, in, in that type of thing. I'm also available on Twitter. Um, I think my handle is uh, the Mike E73. Okay. Um, and then where? What about? Um, I know you have a lot of information. Where can they find the some of the the information on uh, you know the content that you do? All right, sure. Uh, we have a blog. It's mm -hmm. blog.safetyglassesusa.com. Cool. So everyone check out safetyglassesusa.com or blog.safetyglassesusa.com. Right. And Mike, thank you again. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Jeremy. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand right now. I'm feeling like a hundred grand.